Welcome back to In Business. Uh, more signs yet again today that the housing market is still not recovering in the United States. Home prices in 20 U.S. cities fell more than expected in August. The S&P Case-Shiller Index dropped 4 percent from a year earlier. Nationwide, housing prices are now 31 percent below their peak in 2006. Joining us now is Michael Gapin. He's senior U.S. economist at Barclays Capital. Joins us from Barclays offices here in New York. Uh, Michael, welcome to In Business. Your worst case says that we could see a, what, a 7 percent decline in home prices in 2012? Uh, yes. So we put out a piece recently where we looked at uh, our forecast for U.S. home prices through the end of next year. And if the U.S., for example, is able to avoid a recession or a significant spillover from, from Europe, we actually could see U.S. home prices flat to, to modestly higher. But in a significant recession scenario, uh, whereby GDP declines for up to four consecutive quarters, uh, you would see home prices um, fall substantially from here, perhaps as much as, as 7 percent. But so this is very much dependent on whether the U.S. stays in a, in a modest recovery environment or is hit by significant spillover effects from, from Europe. Well, Europe is at least an overhang, it would seem, to market confidence. And then we saw consumer confidence today, at lowest level since March 2009. Does that make you question your worst case? Uh, no, it's, it's obviously something we, we had to factor in. You can't write down any forecast for the U.S. economy right now without considering a significant potential downside from a risk event in, in Europe. And certainly business and, and consumer sentiment is reflecting that. Now, as, as you know, the actual data in the U.S. looks okay. We do think GDP in the third quarter will come in somewhere around 2.5%. So there are worries out there about what the future looks like over the next six months. In the meantime, the data looks okay, and we'll have to see how these two things uh, shake out. So there's a tension between what we would say is the hard data, the things that we can measure and count and the activity numbers, and the soft data or the sentiment. The sentiment is certainly exceptionally weak. What does the new refinancing program that the administration unveiled yesterday do? for your forecast and for the housing market? Well, we would say that it, it doesn't do a whole lot, primarily because you're, you're only looking at it, depending on different estimates, we'll say around another million homeowners that, that qualify, and then based on potential take-up rates on that, we think it, it may boost disposable income by about, say, $2.5 billion over the course of the year, which isn't a lot on a macro perspective. So it's not something that we think would move the needle in terms of the housing market or the broader macro economy. But certainly anything in this direction is better than nothing. And we wouldn't say don't do it. We just don't think it'll have a large enough scale effect to have a meaningful impact on the broad U.S. housing market. Now, uh, Michael, it was interesting in reading your your research here because beyond you know the percentage changes in the forecast, you're talking about a fundamental shift in consumer behavior. You are not seeing the formation of households with younger generations. Is this going to be an ongoing trend? People just not buying or not creating families to, to fill these houses. Right. So the, in, in looking at this, the rate of household formation is about 5 million households short of where pre-crisis trends would have suggested. So obviously with high levels of, of unemployment and a weak job market, it's hard to create those new households. Now, some of that is demographic related as well. And I think that the main shift that you will see in the housing market going forward is that we'll have more multifamily units, more rental units available, probably less single family units. So the composition will shift. We're seeing that. Another way to tell that story is if you have four to five million homes in various states of foreclosures that we have to process in the next few years, well, those households have to live somewhere too. So you're, you're getting a lower rate of household formation given the structure of the economy and the weak growth. And then the shift in the, the underlying housing market itself means more rentals, more multifamily units relative to single family units. Michael, thank you very much uh, for sharing your forecast. Michael Gapin there of Barclays Capital.